So traditional ways of thinking about peer review often involve peer-to-peer -peer interaction among students reading and responding to each other's work as part of the teaching of writing, which is my background. I'm a literary studies and writing person. Um, and often with this form of peer review, there's some kind of rubric granted some kind of validity by the faculty members. So it's still a very, I think it's a very much a faculty-driven process. The model presumes that by peer, we mean the students as peers to each other working in their peer group. Um, I'd like to ask, what if we reimagine peer review in such a way as to align students and faculty member as peers and consider thus a model of peer review that looks more like what happens when a scholar in the field seeks to disseminate their research? I propose we can lev leverage the model of peer review that is essential to the communication of scholarship in our disciplines to transform students into our peers through collaborative work in the digital context in a technologically enhanced course design. So this probably isn't like a, like a true blended learning kind of a situation. I should apologize for that in advance, having heard a whole bunch of definitions of blended learning um, <laughs> in the last like, couple hours. Um, so in my upper level course on graphic narrative, through an experiential learning project involving collaborative research, writing, and publishing in a digital space using digital tools and platforms, resulting in a peer review process leading to the dissemination of creative and critical scholarship, the students and the faculty member in the course work together to generate and share new knowledge as peers beyond the walls of the classroom. So this project, the culmination of my graphic narrative course in fall 2017, is a multi-stage collaborative project drawing on the practices of peer review and scholarly communication within the discipline of literary studies. And I'm going to step us through this project. Um, we sought to achieve the following learning outcomes, understanding and using the visual as a means of critical and creative thinking, as well as a tool for interpretation. And on this, I was really drawing on Nick Susanus's work. If anybody knows his book on flattening, the idea that the visual can be a form of argument and a form of critical thinking. Um, and then synthesizing a wide variety of content, historical, aesthetic, metacognitive, and making something and making something in order to demonstrate learning through that synthesis, and then recognizing the learning that takes place through the collaborative co-creation of new knowledge and publicly sharing that learning. And I want to pause and say the two uh, objectives, the, the two outcomes that are italicized are um, outcomes that I think really required digital technology to be achieved. And in fact, all of these learning outcomes emerged in this iteration of the course, revised from the first iteration of the course, deliberately taking into account the ways I would be using technology. So the use of the technology actually affected how I worked through the learning outcomes. So I devised this project that had the following components. Students created comics responses, sharing reflections and arguments, building on class discussion for each text. At the end of the course reading, each student selected their best response and wrote a critical note of introduction with the goal of creating a course anthology or collective course portfolio to be published on WordPress. And by comics response, this is what I mean. It might be hard to see, but they drew comics that made arguments and offered interpretations of the comics we were reading. And in many cases, such as um, the one that, if you see the second one from the, oh gosh, left, the one that looks like Fun Home, Alison Bechtel's Fun Home, um, she's using Bechtel style to do that, which I thought was really pretty amazing. Um, and everything I'm going to describe from here on out took place over the last third of the semester. The reading and the drawing of the comics responses in the class discussion was the first two thirds. Then through a speed geeking process, students identified <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Students identified uh, partners with whom they collaborated on a shared research paper intervening in some aspect of the field of comic studies, and these were composed using a Google Doc. Um, and these are a sample of some of the titles that the students came up with. And this is all housed on the WordPress page. Um, and then next, the, the papers that the students wrote were published on our internal facing uh, course page in our in our LMS and the students wrote peer review responses to the to each other's papers then I read the students collaborative papers and used their research to write a short introductory essay to the course anthology entitled seeing as a way of thinking and this is my essay that I used uh, my essay that I wrote using their research um, and then the students went through the process of peer review on my essay, having become my peers through their work of developing and co-creating knowledge and expertise in the field. Um, two unexpected outcomes emerged from this final peer review process that I found really kind of illuminating. The part where, um, and that last part, the peer review process where the faculty and the students are collaborating in peer review and publication. 
they decided as a group that they wanted their collaborative research papers moved from our internal LMS page to the WordPress site. So they didn't start out there. They asked to have them move to the public facing site so that readers could engage with the scholarship I had used to write my introductory essay. And they decided they wanted the bibliographies that they created as part of their collaborative papers to also be posted to the WordPress site on a page they wanted called Further Reading. What I gather from this is that students took ownership over the process and product of scholarship and scholarly communication, and that they were committed to making the process as well as the product visible for our classroom community and beyond. Findings from this project indicate that the use of technology, a space for collaborative writing, and a means of facilitating our practice of peer review and scholarly communication allowed for faculty-student as well as peer-to-peer -peer collaboration, a student-centered co-creation of new knowledge, and the driving and owning by the students of synthesis of course content. Thank you.